Morning. I'm Casey. This is Keystone Curiosity, where we talk about all things unique to the state of Pennsylvania. Today's episode is going to be about the Johnstown Flood. Located in and around the city of Johnstown itself, the Johnstown Flood Memorial remembers the deadliest flood in American history. Founded in 1800 by a Swiss Mennonite named Josef Johans, the site that would later become known as Johnstown was initially a village of the Delaware Nation known as Connemaw. The town was established in a floodplain valley where the Little Connemaw and Stony Creek Rivers converge into the Connemaw River. From there, the waters flow through western Pennsylvania on its way to Pittsburgh as a tributary of the Allegheny. Because of its access to the Pennsylvania waterways, Johnstown first rose to importance in the 1830s with the construction of the Allegheny Portage Railroad, a series of inclines and rail lines used to transport canal barges through the Allegheny Mountains. The railroad itself is a marvel of engineering for its time, which I will absolutely be covering in a later episode. But in short, connecting the rivers in Johnstown to the tributaries of the Susquehanna River in Hollidaysburg allowed for travel from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh to occur in three to five days. But time and progress would make the Allegheny Portage obsolete with the completion of the Pennsylvania Railroad at Horseshoe Curve in 1854, which also has a fascinating history and a museum for anyone interested. But not before the construction of the South Fork Dam, a few miles upstream from Johnstown, which was intended to provide water for the canal system with the formation of Lake Connemaw. Despite the diminishing need for the Portage Railroad, Johnstown would see a resurgence in population in the 1860s after the invention of the Kelly Converter at the Cambria Ironworks in town. By the beginning of 1889, Johnstown was home to around 30,000 people. It even had two opera houses and a roller skating rink. But things would drastically change on Friday, May 31st. The day before had seen record amounts of rain, and by the morning of the 31st, the rivers around Johnstown were at their brim, threatening to overflow. But even more alarming was the situation at the South Fork Dam. Elias Unger, the president of the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club, awoke to see Lake Connemaw nearly cresting the dam. He quickly gathered some men in the still pouring rain in an attempt to save it, but their efforts were ultimately in vain, and just before three o'clock, the dam broke. Immediately downstream was the small town of South Fork. Though most of the townsfolk had escaped to higher ground, 20 to 30 buildings would be utterly destroyed and washed away by the 3.8 billion gallons of water that had just been released. The waters continued to barrel down the valley, picking up debris as it wiped out three more towns and a stone viaduct before reaching Johnstown in just under an hour. Most only heard a thunderous rumble, but those who saw it would describe it as a rolling hill of debris, 40 feet high and half a mile long. With a force estimated to rival that of Niagara Falls, the waves slammed into Johnstown. Train cars would be flung from their tracks, wooden buildings shattered and torn apart, ripped right off their foundations, adding their pieces to the torrent of the unforgiving waters as they churned through the city. But the worst scene would unfold here, at the stone bridge spanning the Connemaw River. The bridge acted as a dam, blocking the course of the flow as debris would become clogged in its arches. The tangled mass of trees, house parts, and wire trapped many of the townsfolk, and as the water settled, a fire soon took its place, likely started from kerosene and oil-based lamps that had become common in homes for the time. Frantically, rescuers did everything possible to free whoever they could find, but sadly their efforts could only go so far as the fire spread. When the fires burned out and the waters receded, the survivors would look upon what had once been their home and begin the search for loved ones. Many would never find them. Ninety-nine entire families were wiped out, with over 300 people left widowed. At the final count, more than 2,200 would lose their lives, nearly 700 of which would never be identified, and bodies would be found downriver as far away as Cincinnati and as late as 22 years later. But what exactly caused such a disaster? How did the dam break and could it have been prevented? These are exactly the sorts of questions that people started asking after the disaster. And all eyes turned to the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club. As it turns out, the South Fork Dam had actually broken due to neglect about 37 years prior. 
The initial dam was built under the direction of expert builders and included safety measures like drainage pipes, which allowed access to the dam in order to make repairs. When the club purchased the property in 1879, they did so with the intention of creating a mountain getaway for their wealthy members, which included many business moguls from Pittsburgh, like Andrew Carnegie. Part of that getaway included the peaceful waters of Lake Connemaw, which they endeavored to reform with the building of a new dam. This would be rebuilt and funded by the club, with the work being done by the lowest bidder, who happened to have no prior experience engineering dams. As such, this new structure would lack many of the safety features, and was made from cheaper building materials. The issues with the quality would be further exasperated when the club had elected to lower its height and partially block the only spillway with fishnets. None of the members would ever face charges or be held accountable but many of them were actually involved in the rebuilding of Johnstown itself. The cleanup efforts would take months and would see the help of Clara Barton at the first real test of the newly founded American Red Cross. The rebuilding of the town would take much longer and later include certain safety measures to the rivers, helping to ensure that the lessons of such a disaster were not learned in vain. These lessons live on and are taught alongside the stories of that fateful day at a few locations in and around Johnstown itself. In 1964, the National Park Service would acquire the remnants of the South Fork Dam and form the Johnstown Flood National Memorial. The Visitor Center welcomes the park's more than 100,000 annual visitors with a view that overlooks what had once been Lake Connemaw. Here they hear the voices of the past as they explore the small museum and wander trails detailing the failing of the dam. In town stands the Johnstown Flood Museum. While not a part of the National Park Service, the museum is run by the Johnstown Heritage Association, who bring the history of the flood to life with interactive displays and detailed maps. Staff members guide visitors through three floors of the museum, telling the stories of individuals who lived through this disaster which was honestly my favorite part of the entire visit. Whether because of some familiar connection or from a deep-seated love for history, these folks go into detail with a passion rarely found for events like this. I'm actually a little bit ashamed to say that I came here thinking I was going to be bored relatively quickly and after a few minutes just be kind of done with the place. But I was pleasantly surprised to be wrong. I spent pretty much the whole day learning about all the little stories of these places and there are a lot more than I can possibly cover in these little 10 minute videos that I make. Those stories I feel are best learned there at one of the many events throughout the year, or better yet with the field trip opportunities which I will include links to below. All of this culminates into a truly unique experience. The people who put these places together genuinely care about the history around them and the lessons that it can teach us, doing their best to pass on those lessons to any who will listen. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. As per the usual, if you have any suggestions of where you'd like to see me go next, feel free to leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe so that you can receive notifications about anything else near Johnstown or all across the state of Pennsylvania itself. But in the meantime, y'all have a good one.